Garda was voted top doctor of Washington Magazine. He performed his medical training at the George Washington University and is now an assistant clinical professor. Please give a hand for Dr. Arabi Hussain. Check, check, check. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay? So I'd like to congratulate and applaud all the participants and contestants at today's event. This is a really great opportunity to get outside the classroom and learn something new chance to apply your skills in a way that's innovative, inspiring, and most importantly, fun. So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> also thanks to Padma and the uh, Robotics Youth Board for inviting me here today. And to the planning committee, congrats on putting together a great event. This looks like a lot of fun. As mentioned earlier, my name is Randy Lazardo. I'm a minimally invasive GYN surgeon from Bethesda, Maryland, and I utilize laparoscopic and robotic surgery to take care of my patients. I get referrals from DC, Maryland, and Virginia for surgical management of different medical conditions. So I wanted to start things off with a little bit of a video clip. I'm not sure if the sound is going to work because uh, I sent it as an email attachment. Um, but I want to give you guys a little taste of how robotics is used in the way that we deliver care for patients particularly in surgery. So this is the Da Vinci surgical system. Our health system has about three Da Vinci robots, and this is the XI system. So what it involves is a surgeon actually sitting at a TV console looking at a three-dimensional image. So I'm basically sitting there operating with my hands and my feet. People look at me and they think I'm playing like some sort of a video game where I'm actually doing surgery. So this video, this isn't me by the way, this is someone utilizing the Da Vinci robot and they're actually suturing together a grape that has been peeled. So they're using the instruments to sew the skin back onto the grape. So I, I showed this not to, you know, figure out an expensive way to put fruit back together. <laughs> but I want to sh show you the dexterity and the ability that technology helps to take care of our patients. So this is a view of what the surgeon actually sees. This is a side view to give you an idea of what is actually going on. And if you just take a look, this is actually surgery that's being performed in an Erlenmeyer flask in chemistry. So that's a single site platform. So how that's used in actual real life is that particular instrument is actually inserted into the patient's belly button. So using a two and a half centimeter incision, we're performing surgery in ways that weren't done before. It's pretty cool stuff, huh? There was music that was composed in the background. <laughs> I'm from a Macintosh laptop, by the way, so always utilize the technology. So again, with this uh, sort of uh, technology that's available, uh, surgeons are able to utilize multiple instruments, uh, multiple arms, and even a camera uh, to perform the surgeries that they, they utilize uh, and able to perform. So robots are actually used in many different ways throughout medicine. Traditionally, people think of robots uh, sometimes in pharmacy. They help uh, pharmacists stack and categorize medications. My wife's over here, she's a pharmacist, she knows what I'm talking about. Robots are also used in hospitals where they can actually travel in and out of patients' rooms. They take vital signs, they administer medications, and eventually the technology will get to the point where certain physicians are going to be doing rounds on their medications, communicating with patients through uh, robotic technology. Specifically for surgery though, it's enabled providers to take care of patients in ways that we've never been able to do. So traditionally, these surgeries are done with very large open incisions. Sometimes these incisions are literally up and down, or even sideways. That's how, actually, I was trained. Um, when surgery is done in this traditional way, people are usually in the hospital for two to three days, and they can take up to two months off for recovery. So now with minimally invasive techniques and technology, 
patients are actually able to go home the same day. And then within hours of the surgery, they're walking out the door, they're walking around the night of their surgery, and rather than taking two months off to go back to work and going back to school, they're going back to work within days or weeks. And all of this technology is now just becoming more refined. They've now taught the residency training, they're now fellowships, and it's become more widely available. I'm really excited for all of you here today. All of you are growing up in an age where technology and advances in science can more readily impact on how things happen. Information from around the world is literally at your fingertips. How many people in here know what an encyclopedia is? Wow, I'm actually impressed by that. The World Book, Encyclopedia, uh, encyclopedia Britannica. If you're one of the lucky families who purchased a new volume set every single year, then great. But the rest of us have to go to the library. We have to go travel just to find out information. You guys have access to this in your homes. You have access to technology in the palm of your hands. When I was growing up, there wasn't the internet. There wasn't email. Facebook wasn't even an idea. I'm dating myself here just so everybody knows. <laughs> But now because energy is so efficient, and because information can be shared instantaneously, things are evolving and improving at an exponential rate. And I can't even imagine where things will be in just even one or two years from now. When I was in medical school, robotic surgery actually didn't even exist for the public. Initially, it was a concept for the military, for telesurgery, for troops, who were out on the battlefield that needed urgent or emergent care. I didn't know I would have been interested in it. In fact, when it first came out, I wasn't even a supporter of the technology. I would tell the representatives from the companies trying to advertise it that, oh, I wouldn't need that thing. I can do it laparoscopically or with more traditional laparoscopic instruments and techniques. It wasn't until I was actually at a conference all of you here today. And there was a robotic exhibit. And just out of curiosity, I sat down just to see what it was all about. It was the end of the day, all the reps were wrapping up, so they just let me sit there and basically practice tasks. I was literally sitting there for over an hour. I was mesmerized with, with the 3D visualization of the technology the dexterity of the instruments, and the ability to operate as if my hands were physically inside my patient. With the technology that's available, rather than having these big, large incisions, instruments are being introduced into the patient's body. We're looking inside with a camera, and the ports are about the size of a pen. Just imagine that. Instantly, I was able to see the benefits that robotic surgery could provide for my patients. That was all the way back in 2008. And for the past 10 years, I honed my robotic skills, and now I'm a proctor and proponent for robotic surgery, and actually teach other physicians how to utilize the technology. Now I tell you this story not to elaborate on my medical career, or convince you that you need to become a doctor, or that you need to undergo robotic surgery if you need any treatments. But I want my experience to serve as an example how you should always keep an open mind. Because you never know where you will find inspiration, innovation, or even passion. Initially, I wasn't even planning on going into surgery. I was going into psychiatry, which was, is 100% completely different field of medicine. It wasn't until I did my actual surgical rotation that I realized that surgery was a field for me. And that aha moment some people refer to is different for everyone and occurs at different points in your lives. Today, looking back, I see that the more I use my hands and my imagination, it's almost as if I was reliving the many years of my childhood. I was already developing skills as early as kindergarten and definitely throughout elementary and middle school, uh, middle school that I continue to use today. The imagination and spatial recognition and even eye-to-hand coordination, I developed constructing Lego models, understanding how simple hand movements 
could translate into action without relying on tactile feedback when I would race remote control cars and training my mind to be able to process information when looking at two-dimensional and three-dimensional imaging while playing video games. These are all skills that I now use on a daily basis. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go home and you tell your parents to buy the latest and greatest video gaming system. <laughs> but realize that the skills and knowledge that you're developing today will be applied in ways that you can't even imagine later on in life. I'm actually envious of all of you that are competing today. To have the ability, knowledge, and the opportunity to participate in a worldwide robotic competition. I was telling my wife the other day when I started looking at the uh, robotic website uh, on the internet that back in fifth grade, I remember I had to participate in a science competition. So the day before, I took apart my remote control car, I took two servos, and I put two clay eyeballs on top of those servos. I won that science competition because people were mesmerized with the fact that as they would walk by my stand, the eyes would follow them. What they didn't know is that I was actually controlling those eyes with a remote control from halfway across the uh, uh, auditorium. If I brought that science project today, I'd actually be really embarrassed <laughs> based on what you guys are doing. But it just shows you the opportunity that all of you have before you. Now is such an important time in your lives. You need to explore different interests and expand your horizons. When I was in eighth grade, I thought I knew it all. When I was a senior in high school, I thought I was ready to take on the world. Now looking back, I knew a fraction back then of what I actually know today about experience, about life, and the world around me. And there's still so much more that I didn't get to understand. I encourage you to always try to experience new things. Because you never know what you may like until you try. You may not realize where you have natural talent until you actually test yourself. Refine your skills and apply those skills to all areas in your life. Because one day, you may never know how your talents can be combined until it's actually happening. If you're able to find something that you're good at and enjoy, you can develop a passion for life and success. Your effort and work become more fulfilling. And I'll tell you one thing, it's much easier to get up and work on a daily basis if you're passionate about what you do and you're able to see the fruits of your labor. Make every experience a learning experience. Sometimes you learn what to do and sometimes you actually learn what not to do. Experience will help you realize the difference. So when all of you leave here today and you go home, sometime in the next week, I want you to think about and acknowledge something that you do really well, regardless of what it is. Maybe it's what brought you here today. I also want you to think of something that you'd like to approve upon. Not necessarily a weakness, just something that you'd like to do better. But more importantly, I want you to think of something that you never thought you'd do, but you think might actually make you a better person. If you approach all of your day-to-day -day activities and decisions this way, you'll be able to make a positive impact on who you are as an individual, and more importantly, on the people and the world around you. And then one day, when each of you are all successful, by whatever way you want to define that, or you're super famous, like the people that were pointed out earlier today, always remember to look back and acknowledge those who helped you along the way. Never forget to say thanks to your parents. Be sure to take the time to thank your teachers. And always remember to acknowledge your mentors. Because without them, none of us would be here where we are today. I look forward to your success. Thank you very much.
Again, thank you for your time here, and on behalf of Robotics Review, we would like to give you this for your support and events and